Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that means it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. So this week, it's just Tom and I. So how you doing, Tom? We're only we're only an hour and five minutes late because of you. So that's not Hello, bad. Hello, friends. Hey. Hey, we are not an hour late because we let everybody know that we were doing a, a, a show that was later this evening. So that means we're four minutes late. All right. Well, we're only four minutes late then because of you. That's fine. We did set it up. You were nice enough to tell me earlier in the day that you were going to be an hour late so I could schedule accordingly. So I, that's that's progress. I it, it must be, I, I think it's a power trip. I just like people waiting on me. I don't doubt that that is, in fact, what's going on. I have zero doubt in my mind that that's the case. But uh, tonight, what we're going to talk about, since it's just Tom and I, I thought it would be an interesting chance to do that show that I had kind of mentioned a little while back, which is we're going to take this book right here. And in here, there are a bunch of demons. And the interesting part, as I mentioned before about the demons, is that they exist in both worlds. But they have very different rules. And so I thought it'd be fun to take a look at uh, at the demons as they exist in AOS versus how they were spun out in 40K and kind of talk about design differences, why we think those choices were made, and, you know, where where was there, is there design improvement? Are they better or worse? Is it changed only for the sake of the game itself and the larger rules it sits in? Or is it an actual improvement? And perhaps even would we love to see some of the War Scrolls change to that, even though that'll probably never happen, but that's okay it's still an interesting thing to make a comparison to because they are the only model that's truly one-to-one, -one, right? You can play yep. a Damonette in 40K, you could same Damonette. Literally the same Damonette could theoretically show up on your table in Age of Sigmar because obviously we know they're the same because they have the same names. Many of the special characters are the same people. So clearly the, uh, the warp extends far. I wonder how that feels. Like <laughs> they show up, they pop to the warp and they're like, oh man. I don't have rend now. I have uh, whatever. <laughs> I've got the crappy rules here. On the bright side, these guys mostly just have like swords and you know crossbows and stuff. The other guys have laser guns. Man, we, we should need to hang out here more. Swords are way like, better than laser oh, guns. Man, but laser guns sting so bad. Like yeah, that's my point. Like, I wouldn't yeah. want to show up in the world with tanks and laser guns and bombers and stuff. Like, I'll stick to the world where it's just dudes and, you know, pantaloons and stuff. And, like, even scary dwarves, their guns Give aren't me the much lightning anything. striking guys. Yeah. Like, exactly. They're, they just show up and swing hammers around. That's fine. Whatever. It's no big deal. All right. So uh, we're gonna talk. So we're gonna talk a lot about demons, and we're gonna kind of make a little comparison between the two. And uh, you know, are there rules for the demons and the way that they're implemented in 40k? We'd like to see in Age of Sigmar. Basically, we're gonna look at we're gonna look at the demons through an AOS lens, but in, with their 40k rules. So, that's so what we're this gonna... is my first exposure to 40k rules. That's we're right. Get that out on the table. Hey, that's all right. We're gonna we're gonna get so, you in here one way or another. So Vince, I'm gonna play the dumb person. Yeah, and ask be like, I don't know what that is. How about you explain how this is different than for than AOS? Sure. That's well, the nice part is since these guys are super drops, dead drop simple. Yeah, they're really they don't they play much like as though you're playing AOS. Like I I've run. Don't lie to me. Well, you'll see when we get to the rules. But at any rate, uh, that's what we're going to talk about. So, yeah, uh, as I said, it'll be we're still looking at them through the AOS lens. It's an interesting way to touch a little 40K while still staying true to the AOS roots. So there you go. Uh, but first, of course, we're going to talk about the news. So Tommy, what do you got, buddy? Um, so we got an image on the rumor engine today. Vince, do you have that up for us? I do, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, give me just a minute. I have it up right here. So what you're about to see is a tentacle from a, uh, a Shadowkin Dark Elf kit that's going to release probably later this fall yep. um, of the Abyss Elves um, yep. with the sea yeah, stuff, the Kraken Elves, whatever these guys are, that's what this is. Totally. Don't let anybody fool you. This is not Nurgle. You know how this is not Nurgle? The tentacle's really clean and pristine. There's no pus or, the or bus, pustules. The fin. Or the fin is an aquatic um, addition. You don't have sure. fins like that. If that was a horn, that would be different, but it's not. It's a fin. Fins yep. aren't aquatic thing. Those those little bubbles aren't pustules. Those look more like suckers. 
Yes, they're definitely suckers. Like yes. Yes. Also, so, as as someone has as was well, not someone as many people have rightfully pointed out, this is very, very, very much like the little tentacle tentacles yes. that uh, the uh, elf out of the silver tower is leaping off of. Like Paul, really, very on, identical. Stop, 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 Paul. I am a tentacle expert. Okay, <laughs> we can continue. All right, very good. <laughs> All right, so yes, uh, I I mean the. Oh, yeah, I think the appropriate response there is you certainly do suck. So uh, the, I mean, this to me just like solidifies we're definitely getting those Cthulhu aquatic shadow abyss elves, whatever they're going to be. So yep. like, that's what we're getting. Yes. Like, yes, don't worry. They're coming. Like, we know that you all are waiting for this 40k storm to pass. It'll pass. Uh, AOS <laughs> is coming. Sure. <laughs> the AOS release. I mean, this is, I think, of uh, like, to me, this is very good because, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about in the news is just how much 40K they're going to pack into this year. Yeah. But this is, like, the second s sort of spoiler we've had about of, of this sort of... At least, at least yeah. the second spoiler. You're right, yes. At minimum, the second one. So, to me, this says pretty authoritatively, these guys are coming. Yes. Right. Uh, and And to me, this is the perfect, like, sort of late summer, early fall release. Um, like they feel like September, October release bait to me. Yeah. So, so I had a conversation or more like a late night email exchange with, uh, with Tyler, um, Emerson last night at like two in the morning mm -hmm. and we're pretty sure. And I agree with him on this. Like he's the one that started it. And I confirmed that, um, I am, I'm getting cold feet on a July release. I talked about, uh, um, a July release for general handbook. Um, oh, for I the GHB too. Yeah, I want to retract that. Um, okay. I think that it'll be September. Um, and the reason why, and it's, it's an excellent point, is that they're not. So if they release it, whatever's dropping in the immediate future will have points. Okay. Hold on, I, I don't know what you mean. Go, so sorry. like, so when the original General's Handbook dropped, it dropped with the Sylvaneth release. Do you remember that? Yeah, they came out. I, I like. Th did they come out the? It was the same week as one of the three Sylvanes. Right, movies, right, right. That's yeah. right. And then on top, well, no, 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 no. So it came out, but it had been given to stores. So the three Sylvaneth weeks happened before the General's Handbook, okay. but it was in stores to look at points when the Sylvaneth were releasing. Ah, okay. okay. Got it. Yep. And okay. then, but in there, if you'll remember, we were like, "Hey, look, the Savage Orcs have new stuff." Yes, they did. They hey, did include new units in there. Look, yeah. look the ice. Look the uh, the oh, huh? The uh, the ogres have like ice wind stuff, and they have additional stuff. How's that work? So like the i the beast claw raiders like had more units in there, and so like the thing, and those got released the next month, like four weeks later or something like that. Like the savage orcs were at the end of July, and then the beast claw were I think uh, they were August. So they were all fairly tight, and they were like repacks. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yes, and there was also like new unit names in there. Yes, that's exactly that's yeah. exactly right. They were new yeah. unit names, and that's the point: is that like they didn't spoil things that were going to be released um, super far in the future. The super next, far in the future, like the next couple. Well, it was like the, like next, the next month and a half ish. Right. Yeah. So if it dropped now. We would have two months of looking at names, likely, before the Shadow Elves dropped. Because you're not going to see Shadow Elves before September. That's probably true. Like, we know that, that well, the campaign, the, the, uh, the 40K campaign, happens through the next, what, six months? Or not six months, the next, like, three to six weeks. Like, it starts at the end of July and goes through August. Yes. And they're not going to do a AOS release in the middle of that 40k campaign. Well, I don't. I don't know. They didn't. That they didn't do that for the AOS campaign. I don't remember every week to week if they never had a release of that. I will. I will agree with you and say I. I think that's highly likely. I don't know that that's a sure thing. Sure. What I'm going to say is this, and I feel really confident with this, is that I think what we'll have is we'll have the new General's Handbook dropping around the same time as we have a big um, release. And we'll probably have another army shortly after that, maybe with like a, a couple, a week or two of 40K, then we'll have probably another AOS release, and then we'll probably be pure 40K through the rest of the year. Or something like that. 
we might have a terrain set or we may have like the Nurgle release that could double for both. Like, well, we may see that in the midst of it. Um, but I think that we won't see that first AOS release until, or the true pure AOS release, I don't think we'll see until the, um, till September. It just seems a very long time to wait. Like I, I perhaps, but I, I'm not sure they don't put out the general's handbook. Like maybe you're right about July. I don't know. I'm not sure it doesn't come out at the beginning of August. It feels like delaying it that long, given when it went to the printers is like, they're not gaining anything by doing that because they could drop something like they're the, gaining gaining the momentum on the 40 K because it, gaining, like, the, the height machine is on, in full spin up driving more people to go to the store who are playing AOS to buy a $20 book does not hurt your momentum on 40 K. It helps it. Okay. Like seriously, the more, the number then, one, then maybe we'll have, maybe we'll have the, that other campaign system, the, um, uh, which we know is coming that they announced that they showed the book of the um, path to glory, the path to glory. Well, we're certainly going to have that in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. As far as right. I know that they already said that was going to be July. Um, the like to me the biggest hurdle that they have to get over is they want every aos player to like certainly they want every aos player to go play 40k like somewhere in their marketing department there's a whiteboard with the traditional rings of marketing of like penetration and what's our core segment and what's our next place to expand out to and stuff like that and if 40k was the center the next ring is aos players because they're already your customers and that's yeah. the first people you sell to okay getting those people to go to the store during an event where a bunch of people are there playing 40k and having them and then having the the butt bump conversations of like hey what's going on what let, oh tell me about this thing or they run into their buddies who are playing or whatever is a great way to get those people to buy a product i'm just saying okay no i hear that and i'm not the one who thought of that i'm not some marketing genius i'm an idiot yeah. so somebody in their place certainly thought of that so i'm just saying like i wouldn't I agree with you for the most part. I would say the army's highly likely. Like we wouldn't put out Shadow Elves until post massive 40k push because that's a big investiture of money and that kind of thing. Like da 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 da. da. And you might need at least a couple weeks for a whole new weird Shadow Cthulhu tentacle elf army. Well, um, let me. But just a twenty dollar book's a different story. Let me just say, Paul Wagner, uh, friend of the show, Spider Fang brother. Uh, just suggested that uh, um, that Rob uh, met with Ben Johnson yesterday to be cleared to present information. So Paul's thinking it's within three weeks. Hey, I hope he's right. So that's, I mean, that's internal information. So maybe, maybe. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is they could release it at the, let's say the last week of July or something like that around that point. Like right before the campaign. Yeah, and then and then if let's say the elves did come out in in mid September, okay, that's the same distance apart we had some of the other releases last GHB. You know, no, that's, that's a true. month and a half. Yep, yep. So we'll just have a bunch of names of forces and not know what any of the units do. Yeah, well, there, there's a show. Um, oh, that's absolutely. There's a show in that. We're gonna we're gonna sketch out every single one of them. We'll figure out the whole elf release and make up what what do we think they are. Yeah, I agree. Put that on the docket now. All right. So what else we got for news? Um, so we were making a big deal of the disappearance of the play bearers last week. Uh, there was other some units that included. Whoa. This. What's this? We stuff. I Whoa. was there. We go um, in the Continue. glade guard um, and other stuff. And sure enough, GW without even really like nondescriptly just put it back up on the website. Like, Oh, just kidding about the no longer available thing. Here they are. Oh, by the way, they're in 32 millimeter rounds now. So you have to go rebase. I don't know why you ever thought they were going to be on anything that wasn't 32 millimeter rounds. I would have put those on 32 millimeter rounds right away. You were living in a fantasy world, keeping those on 25s. Well, when I bought the box, they were on 25s. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. So yeah. I, I've been told that you put minis on the base in which they came on. That's fair, but I would just leave them on the 25s. Now that's what I would say. Like you but were then you're I, committed. Then I can't play them in tournaments and that's a problem. I don't know that that's always the case. I'm just saying. You can always rebase them later if there's a tournament coming up and you're going to use your yeah. Nurgle. I thought you weren't going to use your Nurgle in tournaments anymore anyway. Shut up. I oh, don't. okay. We'll see. Uh-huh. I, 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 I feel know. as though I've seen through your very shoddy logic here. 
Well, it just depends. Like, let, let's just say, if Chaos Warriors are going down in cost, uh huh. I don't know <laughs> if I can get two blocks of twenty-eight Chaos Warriors in that uh, that Plague Mark Warband. That might happen. I do that. No one would ever chop through my army before the uh, uh, before turn five ends. Great fun, Tom. That's again. I know. It it's sounds great. like a an amazingly fun army. Yes. Okay, um, we'll see. Uh, I don't. I anticipate some the points adjustment are going to break some things, but we'll see. I mean, that's that's always what you get when you get points adjustments. So. Oh, I can't wait for the arguments on the internet. I I expect. I'm hoping I'm on a plane again when we get the points spoiled, so that way I can be like about to take off on a long flight, and I see you just like ranting and raving like a lunatic on Facebook, and just like ah, raging, craggy. I can't wait. It's going to be great. You bet you're going to pick some other dumb unit that no one cares about to throw a fit about. I can't wait. It's going to be very exciting. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. The Just internet will lose its mind, but I have no doubt. Do you know somebody who's not going to get to see that? On Twitter? Oh, it's yeah. a nice segue, Tom. Thanks. Yes, I do. Rob. Rob's yeah. not going to get to see that. So for those yes. of you guys that don't know, Rob has left Twitter. Yes. Six dice skills. Left Twitter today. Uh, the reasons why are shaded in mystery, so we can all make up our own reasons. Uh, I'm not saying it's aliens, but I think it's aliens. It, uh, it or or the PR corporate machine got a hold of them. Like, I mean, there's uh, the rest of them still, you know, tweet regularly. So I don't know. I mean, who knows? He didn't. He wasn't. He didn't elaborate on it. Um, Maybe but, they weren't going to let him post his uh, converted uh, um, her her all doors. He, they're like, whoa, that is nigh pornographic. No, I, Rob, you can't put those up anymore. No, I think it's because he played with gray models last night and he took pictures of it. That's that's what it is. Like, you can't, come on, Rob, you can't do that. You know better than playing with gray, gray unpainted models. That's uh, That doesn't work, buddy. You get banned right there for that. That's uh, <laughs> painted models only. You get, you get put in the one month off Twitter uh, uh, holding tank. Yes. So if you want to tell him how much you appreciated his content and that you that you value him, obviously he's still gonna be involved in a ton of stuff. It's not like he's going away, he didn't die. It's just or leaving just Twitter. Died. Like yes. I don't want to make too big of a deal of this. Anybody right. who ever saw the South Park episode where people go off Twitter, this is the whole this is the whole crux of that episode. It's a genius episode about making a big deal of leaving Twitter and how it really is irrelevant. So I'm aware of the irony. Uh, but that being said, if you want to go shout it, give him a shout out and say how much you enjoyed it. Bye, Rob. Up. We love yeah, you. We we wish we want we still want you on the show. Just figure, you know, but give give him a shout out and tell him how much you enjoyed him sharing his life on on Twitter, whether Warhammer related or otherwise. So there you go. But he's still going to be on all the TV and doing all that stuff and being on Facebook and every other social media platform. So pff, whatever. <laughs> but it's a thing. It's so. Fun. I'm just saying, okay. two tweets before he left, he play, he had a picture of him playing with unpainted models. Coincidence? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Did he delete those tweets? No, they're still there. I mean, they're still there, but it's, mm. it's you know, there you go. I've put two and two together. Clearly, you've cracked the case. I've cracked the case. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, inside joke. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, talking about cracking the case, um, 40K has maybe given us some glimpses into the future. Yes. Uh, the dark, grim future. of um, And there's a lot of lore that has showed up um, around Pestigores, Blood Gores, Four Walker, Colossal Beasts, nobody knows what those are, and Tentacle Behemoths. So, um, in order, like, I think that's supposed to be uh, Nurgle, Corn. Yes. Uh, the, I think the other one, I think that last one's those Nurgle two. again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's, those are Nurgle. Yeah. And well, the blood gore is obviously corn. I think the spore yeah. walker is, um, is Nurgle. And I don't know what the tentacled behemoth warp monster is. Maybe Slanesh, maybe other things. I don't know. Tentacles right. get thrown around all over the place in chaos. So. But the point of this being that, um, 40 K like, man, Pestigore stuff is in multiple entries in, in the history and stuff like that. And so right. some people have kind of raised the question like, hey, is this a thing? Um, is this are, is this coming? Like, are we getting the Zangor treatment for all of the gore? 
Yeah, I mean, well, we saw this Andor for 40K first, right? And then it wasn't that long when we got our, our AOS Andor. No, we saw him first on Silver Tower. Uh, okay, fair enough. We saw the kit. That's what I mean, right? The, the kit for 40K yes. released first. Yes, you're right. Their very first existence was Silver Tower. Their first kit that was released was 40K. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, And, you know, so I would be hopeful that we'd get that treatment for the same. Because, again... I, I'm a big believer in those kind of multi kits when you can make one thing and sell it to both audiences. That seems like a big win. And there is a big supportive audience out there who want the Pestigore, Cornigore, that kind of thing to come back. To me, the last two they threw in just as like, like that's a writer just making crap up. Okay. Yep. yep. And just being like, sure, let's throw out some weird names. Maybe we do something with it in the future. Maybe we don't. If John Blanche gives us a crazy enough piece of art that the sculptors can go crazy with that we can call like a, a spore walker colossal beast, yeah, then we'll make that thing, right? Or or whatever. Yep. Um, or maybe that one is real because there, I know there's a, there's a several rumors floating around of Nurgle monsters we haven't seen yet. So I do expect to see more Nurgle monsters. Um, but I'm very, I'm very much in favor of the God-specific gore coming back. Those were always cool to me. Um, obviously I don't have any interest in Pestigore personally, but the Zangor were sweet and I'd love to see some, some Cornigore, some blood gore. I think those would be awesome. Um, uh, maybe a more like almost Minotaurish face, right? Like more bull headed than, than goat headed, I think would be great. Like tiny Minotaurs. Um, I just want to know when do the, sl when do the Slanesh, when do the Slanesh gores show up? That's what I want to know. The horny gores? The Hornigors, yes. There you go. The Horigors. <laughs> it's just getting better and better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, I, I do think those were intentional drops. Um, now, whether we're going to see them anytime soon, I don't know. But, you know, they've, they've, when we go back and look at the initial stuff that was spoiled in like the first Age of Sigmar book, right? In the base rule book there, when they mentioned other factions. We ended up seeing all those things that they mentioned, for the most part, spun out. Yeah. Right. The one that we haven't seen yet is the weird shadow elf thing. Right. That's yep. the that's sort of the one that's still there that hasn't gotten You're any treatment. The Silver Tower. I'm no. I'm saying in the original book they make reference to Malarian and like shadow. Oh yeah 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 yeah. And we yeah. haven't seen that yet, but we saw like you Red know they. Slayers. they yeah, they exactly, which they certainly teased out the then the fire slayers and then the fire slayers came to be and so on and so forth. Um, so to me, uh, by the way, that is a great name. I just want to point out that uh the the uh Pornagor is a very funny name. That is hilarious. So there you go. Yep. You win, Sooners. Uh all right. So uh other so yeah i i think it's real there you go but time will tell that's my feelings uh we have a lot of 40k coming a lot yes. of 40k coming a lot of 40k coming yes i mean the, so the relevant part of this right what's your the next news item is they spoiled today that we're going to get 10 codices before christmas for 40k yes, yes. now Maybe you're excited for that because you also play 40K or not. I'm not going to talk about the individual codices. That's not the point of this show. But what's relevant about it for our concerns is they said in there that some are going to be just the book, but some are going to have full model releases around them. Yep. Right? And they mentioned that... Um, they mentioned that... That some of these will be larger releases than just a one week thing. And some will be just drops in the bucket, you know, just like, here's the book, go knock yourself out. The yep. point being that's, I don't, they, they are probably not, uh, get doing like multiples of these books in a week in yep. most cases. So that means 10 weeks between now and the end of the year, that stuff's releasing like are probably 40 K weeks. That's a lot of different armies getting that treatment. Um, so, you know, that, that's a busy schedule where there's not going to be a lot of open space for big AOS releases. Right. I mean, I don't think I'm surprising anybody by saying, Hey, the year is going to have a lot of 40 K releases, but this was like the hard confirmation of just how much we're getting. Yeah. Right. Um, Lots of 40 K all the 40 K. 
Yeah, I I think it was uh it, to me, I think it was it's it's a sign of things to come. By the way, I just want to touch on a comment here. Uh uh George C, it's happening, Sisters of Battle Plastic. Where what is this? What is this thing we're talking about here? I want to know what you mean it's happening. <laughs> do you have do you have information I don't have? I need another post on that one. Because if it, you have just you just tempted a heroin addict right there, George. That's C. right. That is correct. You just like, like, <laughs> like that's what just happened. Like I want you to know that. Just tie the belt off now, okay? That's all I'm saying. So I didn't I didn't see that spoiler, but I'm just pointing out that if that has been confirmed in any way, shape, or form, I need to know. Okay. Anywho, so uh, I think that was more or less all of our news uh did you was there a couple tournaments you wanted to mention obviously meltdown is coming yep. up very very soon very uh, very soon yes yeah next weekend right is meltdown yep. and more and we'll have the links uh in the for the weeks coming yeah we'll slobber knocker in oklahoma yep. we mentioned that yep. i'll throw that down there again um coming up in a month ish i think yeah sounds right and uh you know i saw domus uh shared like the the sort of trophies and stuff Yep. For uh, meltdown today on Twitter, looking good. He's got some some good good uh, prize there. Looks like it's going to be a really good tournament. Um, yep. I'm kind of sad I can't make it all the way out there, but that's a bit of a drive, unfortunately. When I and this is already an insane month, but yep, I'm excited. Uh, all right. So I think that's more or less all the news. I don't know. I got some more news. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Tom. What do you got? So. Uh, I've made a decision. Uh, okay. And oh, yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, tell, yeah, tell him. Share, Tom. And you're like, go on. <laughs> I didn't know what you were going to mention until this. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, I know I may have things in the mail as we speak. Mm -hmm. 40K related things Tom has in the mail. That's what he's trying to, to tentatively uh, get out here. So I, I did not lie when saying this is my first exposure to the book, but I may in fact have hundreds of dollars of books and models in the mail as we speak, shipping to us, shipping to myself. Yes. So Vince, do you want to give me a drum roll for the reveal? <laughs> You're making too big of a deal of this. Go ahead. Here we go. Here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> there you go. Yes. Tom. Stormcast in space. <laughs> Tom is taking the Stormcast back to uh, to 40k. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so that's you right. Tom, yeah, this is happening. So you can do some custodes, some sisters, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought I have I have lots of gold paint, and uh, I can make this happen. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do some custodes. Yeah, uh, Tom, when, when Tom was talking to me, he was enamored by, I think, the, the combination of extremely low model count <laughs> and, and an almost uniform gold paint scheme. Like, these, this army has, has ready to go on it. Like, it is gold primer away from being done. Like, you, you assemble 15 figs, you get out your can of gold primer, you apply a wash, you paint a couple tassels red, your army's done. It's like I'm not I am barely overstating understating this. I know I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty great. So I'm gonna paint like seven models mm -hmm. um and have a fifty battle point force or whatever it's called. I don't know what it is. It'll be fun. Um uh yeah, that's happening. So Stormcast in space. I'm in. Stormcast in space. There you go. Rock and roll. Uh all right. Any other any other big news you want to share there, Tom? Anything no, else that I missed? It. All right. I, I can't. I, I my will collapsed, and when I figured out that I could buy the box while it was still available for like all of it in one box, I was like, mm, "That's happening." <laughs> <laughs> sure. Fifty battle points in a box plus a hero. Done. All right. So, uh, let's talk about. Uh, some picks of the week. So, Tom, what do you got, buddy? What do you What do you want to share with everyone this week? I'm trying to remember what I did this week. I have I, mine. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have anything. Do you need? Oh my god! 
You're so unprepared. It's that your your lack of professionalism. All right, so here's mine. Hey, um, I am on the show. It's I appreciate you showing up. Thanks, Tom. Way to way to give the C effort as usual. No, um, this is more. Uh, you know that that's that's a hallmark for the show. This has nothing. <laughs> yes, that's correct. All right, so here's my pick, and it relates back to a sort of uh, what I hope is a sort of quasi rumor. And uh, I want to take everybody to a recent Warhammer TV video, um, which was a painting video from Duncan, specifically about white lion pelts, um, which some people have read as being prophetic, given we had a couple different lion-related images spoiled, and some people were saying they, he, they did that because, you know, there is a white lion release. I don't know if that... I didn't count that as a rumor because they mostly do those based on requests, right? People send them requests, want to know how they paint things. And so that's generally how they decide them. Um, but nonetheless, it was a good video. It talks a lot. It has some just very simple, good techniques for fur. Um, fur is a fun thing to paint. I see a lot of people um, ask a lot of questions about how to do fur. Duncan has a nice, quick, simple method in this video that, I mean, it's as usual, like two or three minutes. And obviously that's cut down, but it is a very fast method he walks you through. And it makes some good looking fur, um, especially in this case for lighter colored fur, because it's you know more like white lion pelts as opposed to the, we often tend to do fur as darker colors. His And his example is a little lighter, which is another reason I liked this video. Um, so uh, that's, my, that's my pick. I thought it was good. I thought the technique was solid. I thought it was unusual colors. And I hope, although I don't believe, that it ties into some kind of rumor that we would see a lion related thing happen I, at some point in time i have 40 of those in the case we'll never get a white line army i look i doubt it as well that's why i didn't even remotely suggest it should be in the news or rumor section uh but regardless of that i think it's still a useful useful thing so, hey my pick of the week thanks paul is <laughs> the new, good god the new no. black library book play garden is really good you should read it well, it is a Nurgle related thing. So even if you didn't just read that straight from Paul's comment, I would believe that maybe you believed that. There you go. Way to sell way to sell the story. You're okay. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Tom, hobby time. Let's get to that. What what are you working on, buddy? How are uh, you giving I this much thought to it? Obviously, you're working on ordering some new product. I, so, I bought a lot of stuff this week. Like, sure. um, I spent a lot of money. <laughs> some okay. of it was 40 K. Um, and some of it was like, uh, me getting gifts for people. Um, like hobby related and, gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like stuff like silver tower and stuff. Okay. Got it. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and then, uh, uh, I played like Silver Tower yesterday with some people who had never played it, um, okay. okay. And they really, really enjoyed it, like a lot. Um, and so it's just it reminds me of how engaging this can be. Uh, one of the kids that I was playing with, he's in his teens, and um, and he's somewhat on the spectrum, and like really only likes video games, and like it doesn't want any type of interaction, and um. And we convinced him to, to give Silver Tower a try, and he just ate it up. He loved it. And so it was a super engaging experience and just super positive. And, um, and so it just it reminded me of just how well designed some of this stuff is. You know, we haven't – there's been almost no fanfare, even though we launched Warhammer Quest this last – in February. Um, the new box, the Shadows of Ham over Hammer Hall, and they caught some, you know, crap for that box because of, it was a lot of mostly, like, old mini minis. The reality is, is like they put out some really nice games, some really like self-contained games, and we don't ever talk about it. We don't talk about it on the show. We don't, you know, very few people are are ranting and raving on how good like Shadows Over Hammer Hall or Silver Tower were. Sure. Um, and so I want to encourage people that if you have not tried those games out, um, like I've played Silver Tower a bunch of times. I've played that first quest. I don't know how many times at this point. Um, and I love it. It's just, it's a great game with great recall at playability. So if you haven't rolled the dice, if you haven't tried it out, give it a try. Nice. Uh, I mean, I, I agree. Of course it is a fantastically good game. Like no doubt about it. Um, I, I will openly admit it's sitting on my shelf and it has for some amount of time. I haven't gotten a chance to play it much lately. 
Um, but it is a good game. Like if somebody said to me, Hey, I wanted to get a game in. I, okay, cool. I mean, I'd be down for it. I, which I think is like, unfortunately, one of the problems that we have right now is that there are too many good ways to spend our time as far as those yep. games go. Right. Like yep. it, it's almost a challenge to say, where am I going to play the game? The, you know, to which game am I going to play? Cause there's so many good ones right now I want to play. So that's yep. what, what happens. Um, that being said, I think the the good sign of it is if somebody else wanted to play it, would I immediately roll them dice? And the answer is yes, I would roll them bones, right? So, yep. yeah, I'm down with that. Um, so for me, my hobby time, um, I finished up the Chaos Lord on Manticore, which I threw out there today. Um, he was a little bit like I finished up the Night Titan, obviously, over the weekend and wanted something quicker uh, to work on. So I, you know, had... Kudos okay. on the uh, free hand, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I was very happy with how how she came out. And yes, it is a she. Um, the but I, uh, I was like, oh, I want to do something quick. So I looked around, and I, uh, so I pulled out a bunch of the Dogs of War models and was going to work on them that I had had sitting in. In I, I was trying two different strippers out. I was trying sure. a new kind of purple power. Yeah, you purple. were. <laughs> yes, I was uh, like a new kind of like purple power and denatured alcohol, which is like, you know, fuel, like pure alcohol, no water, because I had read that that was really good at stripping acrylic paint. It wasn't. It was terrible. It didn't strip anything. So I don't like and I left it soak for two weeks. Um, and this was on metal models. So whatever. Um, so I had to pull them out of there you know, rinse them off, couldn't get any paint off. So then I put them back in the purple power. All my dogs were, I have two big units of Birdman of Katas, Katataraza I want to work on, uh, at some point here, or we're going old school. And, uh, as well, I have an, I have two old war wagons and an old steam tank lined up as well. Um, for, for someone who hates metal models, my, my to do list is surprisingly full of freaking nineties metal. Um, well, no, that makes sense. You don't want to do them, so you're choosing other models of paint instead. Sure. So I, so I didn't have those, so anyways, I did the cast order on Manticore. But speaking of metal models, the other thing that I've been working on kind of in between is I'm trying to figure out, in thinking about a potential future sister's color scheme, I was like, well, let me play around with old Bertha. So um, Berstrung or whatever her name is from uh, the... Old sisters of. Did you put a gun Sigma? in her hand? You bet your bottom dollar I did, Ugh. baby. She's got a gun now. Ugh. Uh, so I gave her a, like a uh, some kind of gun. I don't know what kind of gun it is. It's some kind of gun. I think it's an old gun. Like I think I gave her a fantasy gun, but I yeah. figured she could be like an. Uh, she could either be what she can be. Whatever she can be a witch hunter in AOS. Or she can be like uh, an Inquisitor in 40K because they dress very similarly, strangely. And in 40K, you can be armed with some kind of gun and a thunder hammer. And I was like, okay, well, there you go. Hammer, gun. But she also can be uh, a witch hunter. So yeah, I'm very not happy with her. But there she is. She's coming along. She's not done yet, but she's coming along. It's I, I, I painted her armor completely and then went back and repainted it again. And I still don't know that I'm happy with it. I cannot so, settle on a color scheme so for do these you wanna, girls. Do you want to know uh, a suggestion? Hey, man, I'm, I'm all looking for a suggestion. So Topher has been working on his. Like he's doing a Stormcast, like female Stormcast, like Sisters of Sigmar style thing. Okay. okay. And he's going with black and white. And so he's leaning into the nun look. Sure. Um, and doing like heavy black with like white highlights and stuff like that. Um, and so wanting to like lean into the nun with, nuns with guns. Sure. Uh, aesthetic. So just an idea. I want to throw that out there. Um, I don't know what freehand options might be there with like embroidered edges of the robes or stuff like that. But yeah, it's tough. Some of them have more options than others. She doesn't have near as much like robe as the other ones do. She's more heavily yeah. armored. Yep. Um, but yeah, I like I thought about the monochromatic thing, like black and white, what you're describing. There. Yep. I've just never really been a fan. I mean, I like color. I like bright color as, you know, anybody who walks into right. my office will know. But that's about, that's like trying something different. 
which is your mo. It's fair. No, I. You're right. That's fair. There's nothing. Nothing wrong with that. That's why I went for uh, her armor was black first. I didn't like it, so I went like sort of to a purple NMM, and I didn't like it, and now it's white. <laughs> I repainted her armor three times, and didn't like it every time. Uh, so I'm glad I used thin layers of paint. That's all I'll say. Um, all right. So yeah, it, it, I. I'm not sure what's up next. I'm hoping my TGG2 stuff arrives soon. That's all I'm saying. It's supposed to be arriving soon. So I can start on the first half of my theoretical Sisters of Battle Army before the, the rest of them show up. Uh, but I'm stuck in this, this endless pattern because right here in this box, okay, in this, these are St. Celestine's and these are Germania Superior. I have two of them and four of her little cohorts. And uh, I can't paint them because I can't figure out what to do for like their basing scheme. I ordered a bunch of new stuff to do 40k style basing. Suddenly switching to 40k basing is tough. Yeah, uh, it's a problem. I'm gonna buy the Insector Imperialist basis. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. <laughs> like, yep, going cheap. Like, nothing, nothing wrong with that. I, I just like. Or I'm gonna go lava basis. I'm gonna go lava world basis. Mm -hmm, that's fair. I just I already have a lava bit world base army. Right, so I, I didn't want to do another lava world. Well, army. no, you, you go heavy like basalt, less lava. You go like heavy blacks and uh, with like bright cracks and stuff like that. Sure. Because like sure. you're mostly lava, like you're mostly red lava on all your lava. Yes, bases. correct, correct. Um. Anyways. Oh, that's fine. So TBD on that. Uh, I she's fun though. I like her. She's one of my favorite figs they've ever produced. Um, Bertha, I may, like this special I, character. I may have that in the mail too. A a sister uh, uh, this this more time figure? No, the tri the triumvirate. Oh, got it. Uh, good choice there. Yes, uh, excellent. Yeah, I need I need some wing replacements, Tom. So that's I was hitting you up for prosecutor wings. That's for the Germania Superior. I hate their their dumb little jump pack wings. Look stupid. So there you go. No, oh, that's what's going on. I see now. Yes, I need to replace them with prosecutor wings. Which are which should have been forty k wings, anyways. Let's be honest with ourselves. How do you not have a bunch of prosecutor? You replaced all of your initial prosecutor wings with feathered wings. Where did they go? Somebody a long time ago asked me for them for a project, and I gave them mm -hmm. to them. Got it. And so you want me to, you know? <laughs> yeah, I like <laughs> pay forward. Pay forward. Correct. <laughs> That's how this goes. Alternatively, I need you to compensate for my mistake. That either way you want to look at it, that's fine. I'm happy with you. I'm more inclined to compensate for your mistake. Sure, that's fine either way. You can you can cast this in whatever light you feel is best. All right. So shall we turn to some demonic discussions, Tom? Uh sure. Uh, I I mean I don't know if that's what we're doing, considering that's not what you spelled on the title of the show. What did I spell? Let's <laughs> continue. Did I, did I spell it wrong in the title of the show? Go on. Demons in 40K versus AOS. No, they're, 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 it, you have an A in there. Like, the books have an A. Oh, I, whatever. It, they're freaking demons, for goodness no. sakes. No, nope, you got to get it right. Okay, I'll add uh, the A. You're not even a 40K player. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're pretty much right. Um, but that's fine. I'll add the A afterward. Uh, that's my judgmentalism already coming through without even a book in hand. Sure. So, so let's talk about this first. Let's talk about let's talk about demons in AOS first. Let's lay some groundwork okay. here. Okay. okay. Where that's do you currently rate, you know, the demons as sub factions or as a whole within chaos and AOS right now in the meta? What what are the strengths? Where are the weaknesses? That kind of thing. Let's just level set here right out of the gate. Like, there's some obvious powerhouses. Um, okay, so uh, obviously, like, your Zinch Demon change, change Host stuff is up at the top. Mm -hmm. um, you put Change Host, you put Citus Horde. Um, that's, that's, that's putting some numbers up at tournaments. Um, I think there's a strong Corn Demon army out there, but I haven't actually seen it played yet. You know, um, real I, quick, let me talk about that. Just, just yeah. one, before we get into this, I just wanted to quickly mention on a news item we didn't cover, but I wanted to. Oh, yeah, the... Heat the 3. Tournament. Yeah, Heat 3. Yeah. With the squig win, yes. With the the the, the num first place taken by an army mostly composed of squigs, uh, yeah, destruction. And what? Uh, six. That warms place? my squiggy heart. Yeah, I think sixth place was the first chaos entry, right? And that was Nico. Yeah, who was playing yep. like largely Skaven. 
Skaven led by Archeon. It's yeah. Archeon and his furry friends. Yes. So, I mean, Zeech didn't even show up at this tournament, like, a, a, in that regard. Yeah. I mean, there was there was Zeech there. I just mean, like, in high placement. Um, yeah. So, I thought that was very interesting, that shift in the meta. Um, I thought that was fascinating. Okay. So, the, uh, you know, for me, when I looked at the Heat 3 results, what I saw was the destruction of the thing where Zeech is sort of the ultimate power. Um, because everybody's been preaching up Zinch and was saying that Zinch is going to be blah, 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 and all this stuff in Skyfires and yada, yada, yada. And then when they didn't even top six and the best Chaos Force was Skaven, which I was all about. Go, Nico. That was way to go, buddy. Um, I thought that that was uh, telling that the meta adjusts to these things um, because I think people expected Zinch and had the right counters for it and pretty much beat it down. That's my read of it. Um, yeah, but they were expecting Zeech. Yeah. Now, there also could have been some bad matchups and bad luck and all that stuff. I mean, tournaments are, are where they are. You know what I mean? It's not like a it's not a mathematical equation. Yep. Um, but I do th I, I do agree with you still that I think Zinch is in the best place overall, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I, like I said, I think that there's a solid Corn army out there. Um, I think Corn has a compelling possibility. Um. I haven't seen them yet. Uh, obviously, the Taliban has been persistent for Nurgle, um, but it's not really winning any tournaments. I think they're well positioned for Zinch. Um, I think that they could use some point adjustments um, for Taliban. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's not a top tier army. Like, it's middle at best. What's holding them back in your mind right now? Like, let's uh, just quickly to touch on them. I don't think there's anything holding Zinch back right now, right? Zinch yeah. has full book support. They've got a pretty good selection of models and options. Yeah. They can play strong enough in most phases. Yeah. Right? Um, dominating in some. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, on the whole, they're in a very good place. I think what holds Corn and Nurgle back is, like... Nurgle has synergy, but lack of selection. Yeah, Korn I mean, has like even less synergy, more individual sort of skew units. Yeah. Um, and I like there's a couple battalions that have good synergy in corn, but to me it's still not, it's just not the murder there, right? host. The murder host, and then yeah. you flash with some mortal for buff. Right. Yeah, I mean the problem is is that um for Nurgle, there's just not um there's not book support, but more importantly than that, like there's no standout units. Like your standout unit are plague bearers, and they're standout because they're hard to kill. They're kind of hard to kill. Um, and what I mean by that is like their save is terrible. So if you can get actually land hits on them, um, they're just not any good. And they're in their because they're like a five up base save. Um, I don't know. Like uh, like they're good, but they're not. Uh, they're efficiently pointed. Let me say it that way. They're efficiently pointed. Sure, they're tough for uh, their cost. I mean, they're I think tough for their cost, is what yeah. I'm saying. Um, but what I would say is that, like, there's just no other standout units. Like, they're here. The Herald of Nurgle is junk. The uh, the big... Um, the big... Uh, unclean one, greater unclean one, is okay. His command ability is terrible. I would argue he's pretty hot garbage, but still, okay. I sure. mean, he's okay. Like most people think he's very survivable, but he's prone to getting double turned because it's easy to take ten wounds off of a model. Right. Um, and then on top of that, the other big challenge with him is that his command ability is terrible, and his wounds, um, and like technically, uh, but rules as written, I I don't think that his spell affects himself. Like you can't cross the line on yourself. So whenever you cast your spell. A lot of people that have played it competitively have been playing it such that he heals himself with his own spell every time he fires it off. And that's just, I simply, I don't think that that reads correctly. Um, you think a line starts at his, the edge of his base, basically. Yeah, and it never crosses his base. Right. Does that make sense? And because of that, it's, it starts, it's a line between your two bases. So he doesn't ever heal himself with that spell. And that's a problem. Like, just, like, if you're playing it that way. And so I think that people are overestimating his cost. He's not Killy. There's almost nothing Killy in the army. Your best bet are, like, Plague Drones fishing wound bonuses from Plague Priests. 
Uh, but nobody plays that. Like that's I've never seen an army put together like that. That's fishing for the mortal wounds from you know like like you would snake surfers, and they're not right. even really effectively pointed either. Um, so I would say mobility and lack of killiness, any sense of killiness in the army. No good general, uh, no good heroes for demon, you know, nervous demons. So I just ah, uh, they. I mean, they're the Taliban heals wounds. Okay. Sure. Yes. You know who else heals wounds and restores models? Skeletons. Yeah. I mean, a lot of things is the answer is the short answer to that question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what skeletons also have a five up five up. <laughs> like, well, and like 50,000 attacks if, if they're even right. Moderately buffed, right. Yeah. Exactly. Like they don't have minuses to hit, but they have 10 bajillion attacks. Right. Um, and they synergize, synergize with great generals and great other options. And you know who you don't see dominating the meta? Skeletons. Right. You know, it's like, so I just, yeah. So, I mean, okay. Can we agree then that Slanesh is hot garbage in AOS right now? The Slanesh demons. Uh, yeah, nobody's playing that. <laughs> like, like Slanesh Mortal, like obviously Kale took Slanesh Mortal and placed like six at um at Adepticon and he did really well with it and he was PSU was milking the banners that give minus one to hit which you know kudos to UK oh, I was gonna do the same thing and I backed off because I didn't want to be cheesy. Um that's that was your concern. Yeah that stopped him this time sure that's what it was. No, it did it did because I was gonna have neg four to hit in the first round of combat against me. Like that was sure. on the docket and I was like mm, this is too much. Like I like I can milk it, but man, this is this is one step too far. Cunning deceiver and all the other minuses. Sure. Um, and so I just I couldn't do it. Um, but uh, Slanesh Mortal, um, there's something there. Slanesh Demon is it just struggles. It's super hot garbage right now because it just it doesn't do anything except be fairly fast. And I mean fairly fast. Like in yeah. a world like being able to run really fast is cool, but not impressive in a world where people teleport. Right, like that's or or fly sixteen. Right, yeah, like exactly. Skyfires or Enlightened Dew. They're sure. like, oh wow, your chariot is almost awesome. Yeah, Quicksilver is super fast, but he's not impressive compared to even like Lockjaw, the teleporting dog. Like that's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so coming to ABC this fall. Um, but my badly. point coming <laughs> badly, <laughs> badly, badly. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I, I argue that Slanesh is just a hot pile of garbage and, and I agree with your ranking. I think like, to me, it's sort of a diamond, yeah. right. Of like yep. Zinch at the top, Corn yep. and Nurgle, both having some, some options where they could be played out, but probably need to mix in other things and couldn't yep. be played straight. Right. Yep. And Slanesh, if you like just being, why even add any of this to the army? <laughs> it doesn't, yeah. you don't like, don't do it. You're wasting your time. Right, exactly. Uh, even though technically any of the the like the Hellstriders and uh, all of those mortals technically have the demon keyboard as well, so there is a, you know the um, the Lord on demonic mount. All those that have like demonic esque mounts all have the demon keyboard. So there is some actual ability to mix in mortals and still maintain demon allegiance if you want to do. But nobody's doing that. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean. The hell, the, the fact that you've, that it is the mortal guys riding around and they're only absorbing the demon keyword from their dumb, you know, anteater ponies yeah. says a lot, right? Because I yep. agree with you, the health layers are the only really decent unit unit in the army. And obviously it's because of that neg one to hit. I mean, that's it. That's what they're riding in the back of, you know Yeah, the I mean? health striders, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's not like you're looking at those guys to, to be some, to be murdery or killy. And that's the problem. No, no, they're like a second rank. They're going to extend their aura out to other models over the top of your chaos warriors that are already at neg two to hit. Right. Okay. So now, so that's kind of where demons sit in AOS. Now, obviously we By can't. By the way, talk. that force is the STD force. Is this slaves to darkness? Is that what you're saying? No. Well, it is slaves to darkness, but it's yeah. also. STD. Commonly it's abbreviated STD. Yes, it's exactly. Ner it uses Nurgle and Slanesh. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so, so now I want to pivot and talk about sort of demons and how they were imagined in 40K, right? Sure. And let me lay some ground rules here or some groundwork here. Foundation of this. One, and there are two important things I think that are relevant that they, that they put 
back sure. in that were a traditional part of demons. Okay. That I feel are, it's something I, I did miss. Okay. One is they gave them back their sort of quote unquote invulnerable save, right? What now, whether this, um, so in 40K, it means you either take your armor save or your invulnerable save. It's, it's a replacement effect, right? They codified the sort of, there are still damage prevention saves, blah, 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 but they're very, they're much more rarefied. They exist, but they're rarefied. Um, and instead you have much more commonly and vulnerable saves, which in AOS traditionally has been, has played out often as, you know, the damage prevention role, right? Yeah. Um, because those get thrown around an equal amount, probably to how invuln gets thrown around in, in, uh, in 40 K, but they give them back the five up and vulnerable save they had for a long time in, in, uh, in both games, meaning that their normal armor save is irrelevant. Their normal armor save for most demons is like a six up. It's a t-shirt. It's irrelevant. You're never going to roll it. You're just always using your five up and vulnerable save. Right. And that and can't be modified, right? You're correct. It can't be modified. It can be ignored because mortal wounds will punch right through it. Um, but it can't, but it can't be modified. But it's not so. like if you had something equivalent to mystic shield, which they don't, but if you had something equivalent to that, like you, that doesn't buff your invulnerable save. Correct. It doesn't, it doesn't. Yes. It just, it is right. It's just sort of a thing. Yeah. Um, that's not to say there aren't things that can modify invulnerable saves. There are, um, yeah. but they're, but they're, they specifically act on that thing in a certain way. Um, <clears throat> it's, there's, it's not like a blanket rule or something. Correct. Correct. So, and, and I know it's a minor shift, but it always felt, I don't know, like, then this is a world where most of the armies you face run around in three up saves, right? Because if you assume sort of the average of the world is space Marine armor, which yep. it kind of is, um, then, you know, their save is still kind of crap, but yep. the fact that it's just five and always five, it's so much fun to play with. Cause I'm just like, people shoot me and I'm just like, it's fives, it's fives, it's fives, you know? And there's, it's <laughs> just knowing it's there. It cuts damage by third period. Yeah. It's just like, this is what it is. But there's always a chance, right? I'm like, okay, all I need to do is roll lots of fives. There's always a yep. chance. It feels good. It's sort of the. It was always sort of the thing I loved about playing demons is that you had that weird, that weird thing there that there was always a chance. Uh, not a good chance, but a chance. The other thing they did was make the marks mean something. Yeah. So the marks actually like being a particular demon type, being allegiant to a certain god, has an effect, right? Like a real, a real rules effect. And to me, this is the thing that like, if there's, if there's one miss in AOS that I've, that I, you know, I, I constantly am reaching for the units that build it back in like the Lord of chaos, where he can be marked and then pass his mark benefit to his troops. Yeah. I always felt like the mark should be doing something right. Like being allegiant to corn or Slanesh or somebody should have uh, an effect in some way. And there are ways you can do it as I just mentioned, but in this, it does. So like, you know, going down the list, effectively it's like it looks like this corn gets an extra strength and attack when they charge or are charged which is crazy good um slanesh has always strikes first effectively um nurgle has an extra five up save that can't be modified they they get the aos damage prevention save they get and, the true f double five ups which yeah they get the true double five damage up. by like 40 or by 60 percent or around 50 percent yeah it's yeah it's 16, 49, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, yes. And Zinch gets better ward saves. Like their invulnerable save gets better. Um, it's simple rules. They're easy to internalize. Every demon has them. This was the best change they made to the army. If I could, if there was literally one thing I could steal back and, and have in there, and it wouldn't need to be keyworded. Like I don't need keywords. It could just be like a common ability they all have across all their war scrolls. You know what I mean? Like literally printed on there. It doesn't need to be codified in some greater way. I would be okay with it. It would be something like that. I love the idea that being allegiant to the gods manifests in some specific real way, right? Rules wise, beyond just the sort of conglomeration of rules, they tend to act like this. They tend to do this sort of thing. Does that make sense? Yep. So to me, that's sort of the big one. The other, so now I kind of, I want to touch on a few of the gods. So let's start with your favorite. Let's start with Nurgle. Cool. Okay. Let's do this. All right. What did you say is your problem with plague bearers? Okay. They like, don't let's, really have any punch. 
Yeah, like I think Nurgle in general, one of its issues is well, we'll talk about Nurgle in a broader sense, is that they're they're not very punchy, right? Right. So like when I look at the way they were implemented in 40k, they feel like they've got more of a distinct role. Almost like they thought like because of the way that the the troop types work in 40k, where you have like heavy support and versus elite versus troops and stuff like that. Yep. Because there's that distinction. Yep. It feels like they were then able to build to the role a little better and things have a more defined purpose. And so the rules rise to meet that purpose. Yep. And so when I look at plague bearers that are sort of your standard troop of that army, they're just a total tar pit unit, right? Yep. Like their toughness four, we mentioned they've got the double five up. And then if you've got more than 20 of them, you get basically they get the old neg one to hit thing. Yep. Okay. Um, in any phase. And, you know, neg one to hit combined with double five ups, it's pretty good. It's pretty yeah. good. I mean, it's not the neg two, neg one, but yeah, it's good. Sure. I mean, but you're using other things to get that, that neg two, neg one. I understand no, that you're, you're not. The plague bearers have in, you're saying a high number, it's neg two shooting, neg one, right? You're not counting no. like cunning deceiver or anything. No, I'm not. Yeah. Like, yeah. so plague bearers default have neg one to hit at, from range attacks. Right. And then what happens is, is after they hit 20 models, so above 20 models, they have neg two to hit at range, neg one to hit in melee. Right. Absolutely. And when they go under 20, they lose the neg one to hit in melee. Right. Whereas, but then here's the interesting part. So their weapons are still pretty garbage, let me just say. <laughs> like, they still don't do a great deal of damage. Because um, they're still just, like, as user sort of damage with yep. one, no rend. Yep. Um, but interestingly, because you mentioned the Herald being worthless, right? Yep. And I think of that a lot of the Heralds aren't very good in AOS. Like yeah. most of the Demon Heralds, unless there's a specific buff written on the War Scroll that says like, you know, if you're within a particular Herald of blah, 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 or Demon Hero of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's about the only purpose the Heralds ever serve in AOS. Whereas here, every Herald in all the Demon Armies across the board just adds a flat plus one to, to, to strength for everybody. So suddenly you're running around with strength five plague bearers, which in most cases is going to move your wound from four up to three up. All right. So nope. they're basically granting and it, they're often granting plus one to wound, not always, but often just by being near a, a, a herald. That to me is more punchiness, right? It helps to answer the offensive problem. Um, the other thing I would point out is that if you look at something like a uh take something like a uh a plague drone right sure. which you mentioned so plague drones in aos three for 220 right yep um so plague drones in this have uh a decent ranged attack they have an okay uh their melee attack is basically still just a plague bearer but then the way that they've stacked it, these models effectively make five attacks. All right. Now, none of them are backbreaking, but having a five attack model, four of those attacks, by the way, do multi damage. They're like yeah. two damage items, like the little proboscises of the little drones are two damage attacks. It makes a difference. Right. Um, especially when you figure these guys can also benefit from the Herald and so also get stronger and blah, 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 blah. Right. So in my mind, because, and, and the plague drones, by the way, are even classified as like fast attack. They're supposed to be the, the fast troops of Nurgle, which yep. is hilarious to me. Um, but it's those kinds of changes. Like they did cover some of the holes that are there. Um, how many attacks do plague bears or not plague bears? I'm sorry. Uh, plague drones have in AOS. What's the combined profile? I don't even remember off the top of my head. Uh, it's like a like one one. They have four attack lines. Um, I think. I will pull them up. Let's do a little comparison. Already on it. They have five six. Yeah, they have one death set range. They have a plague sword, a venomous sting, and three prehensile proboscises. Yeah, so they do have the same number of attacks total. That's interesting. Yep, yep. but uh, what's his face? Uh, Glot can, can increase all of them by one. Hmm. All right. So they go from six attacks uh, up to ten attacks. 
with a with Glocken in the area as a commander. Uh, yeah. So here's my question: Overall, would you want to see something like the flat, you know, the extra damage prevention save, uh, or like more stackable defense in Nurgle? Do you feel like you're missing that, or do you feel like you just want more offense? Like, you know what I mean? Like, where where is the what? What would you do? You want them to lean more into their strength? You're trying for demons. Yeah, for demons in Nurgle. Assume we're not we're not taking the mortals into the the equation here. We're sticking solely to our demonic brethren. Um, I want some other interesting units. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, I I think that if I had an invulnerable save, I'd be happy with the plague bearers because at least I'd get five up, five up. Like I'd get a reliable five up, five up. Where now I just I can write off that saving throw. Like the saving throw is not going to go up, and so I just have a five up ward with not, nothing else stacking. Right. Um, Very often that their normal armor yes. save just gets so cut out. So invulnerable right? would be fine with me. Uh, trading the minus one all the time, I guess, would be okay versus the two minus two minus one. Um, uh, I wish they had. Uh, I mean, obviously, more mortal wound output, but that's the response that everybody's going to give. Um, uh, I maybe more range, like if they're going to be slow, great. If give them range, like give them some other means of engagement. Like I could take plate call catapults, of course, I get it. Um, but uh, or hell cannons or whatever. But it's just a rough. It's a rough go of it. Sure. I no, I get that. Um. So uh, so like. Either you mess with their speed, or you give them range, or you basically make them immune to range attacks and make them no fun to actually shoot at. Like you, you need to do something um, because they're not going to kill you when they get to you, and they're going to move relatively slowly across the board. That's what I, that's how I feel with uh, Nurgle demons, at least. Okay, fair enough. So let's talk about Mister Guo. Let's let, let's let's end our Nurgle discussion on him because I oh. think it's relevant because. As you said, I I feel he's strong. My my strong position is that Naos he is underwhelming as all get out. Like if there's any greater demon in need of a rewrite, it's that guy. Sure. Um, I just have never felt like he like I see him and on the table, and I'm just like okay. Yeah, you made a mistake. Right, I just don't even feel like it's it's target priority. Like that's how underwhelming that guy is, right? Yeah. So here's a couple interesting things. You look at him in 40k, he's a 12 wound model, not 10. Yep. Okay. Um, he's faster base, seven inch move instead of his because he's what he's a he's like a five inch mover. Yeah. In in AOS, it's right? So bad. It's that's shocking. That is shocking how slow he is for a monster of that size. Like that dude is truly trundling along. Yeah. And I would also point out that his standard rend on his weapons, I understand yeah. that's not what it's called, but his standard rend in 40k is neg three. And he starts with five attacks. Yes. As opposed to the AOS version that starts with three attacks and goes to one. Well, I mean, given that technically the AOS one does have eight total, right? Um, yeah, but the other ones, no, whatever. Or sorry, six total. Six. Three for the flail, three for the sword is how he starts, right? Because one of them is on the chart. Yeah. But again, these are also higher damage attacks. Like his his bile sword is not only neg three rend, but D6 damage in 40k. He's hitting like a cannonball. Yeah. Right. It's just so good. <laughs> it is. And like I, I think like if this guy was an AOS, it'd be like, yeah, I could give 300 for him. Sure. I feel like he'd actually be somewhere near worth his points, right? Like, and and what's sad is that even the exalted well, he's only one, like two twenty now, but sure. that's what I'm saying. Like, I'd give three hundred or something like that. Well, that's my point. I don't think right now he's worth his two twenty. Is what I I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, and and moreover, it seems like he could be or should be more expensive. It seems like the greater demons should run up at the cost of where like the new. Uh, like the new Bloodthirsters and Lord of Changes got pointed, right? Yep, like the because, 300 to three, 360s. Yeah, because, to... yes, they should have abilities that justify those point costs because they're greater freaking demons, right? Yep. 
Um, and the, I have like two in the case, and I'm like, mm, yeah, probably not. <laughs> like, honestly, like I look at my two uh, greater and clean ones, and I'm like, you know, I could probably like Zenithal and wash these guys. Yeah, I mean, they're be, they're a total wash army. Yeah, and and be, that's what I did with the other ones, and be done in I don't know a relatively short amount of time. And I'm like, nah, it's not worth the effort. It's not. It's not worth a 45 minute paint job. <laughs> That's that is truly a a sad evaluation of their of their cap of sort of their capabilities, right? Well, because again, the only way that you can run these right now in AOS is to go full tally band. Like that's the right. only way that it's valuable. And at that point, like it's just not like you're stuck in at something that's just can do something, but honestly can't do it as well as my Chaos Warriors can. Right. Because yep. I can get the three up re-roll while I save a two wounds sure. model. With more saves. With more right. even secondary saves. Like Right. Yeah. Nope. I agree. All right, let's talk about the let's talk about Big Red, shall we? Sure. Let's move on to some blood for the blood god. So uh corn to me it came out very interestingly. The sort of plus one strength, plus one attack thing all the time, falling very much in line with corn. I would point out that the distinction between like plague bearers in AOS and plague bearers in 40k feel very similar. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh bloodletters in AOS and bloodletters in 40k <laughs> do not feel very similar. Uh no. nope. 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 Um, first off, they're, they hit better. They're more accurate. Okay. Like I just, I love these guys. Like this blood letter pops out in the 40 K verse. He's doing way better with his life. He's, uh, he's more accurate in how he hits. Okay. Cause he's on three ups. This dude's probably rocking around at strength five or six. So he's probably wounding on three. So that's going to hold the same. Cause he's three up in AOS. Um, he's faster as his move goes up an inch because he's out in the 40 K world. Apparently gravity is let lighter on most 40 K planets, I guess is how I read that. And, uh, notably, so like, obviously what's the big deal with, with blood letters in AOS? It's, it's the mortal wound bomb, right? Right. Right. Which I don't think anybody's a super big fan of that. By that, I mean, people run it, but I think in general, and it's useful, but, but like playing against it is not fun. Oh, which army do I want deleted? I guess this one's going to go. Right. So, and it's all about stacking and rolling out for these bonuses. And, you know, you have, you have all this synergy and even on your side, even if it's you, then your, your critical pieces could be picked out for your combo, right? The yep. things that are, you're using to generate the plus ones to hit and blah, blah, or blah. Or fly blah. them 18 inch forward or whatever. Right. If you're doing the old, the old sail combo. So, whereas when you look at them here, right? Um, what I would, what, what happens is. If they get more than 20 people, they still get the plus one to hit. Okay, so very similar as far as that go, but that means these guys are going to two ups. But instead of having like that weird trigger, which yep. is something across the board, by the way, there's a lot less on a six do this or six or more do this. It's still there. They still use yep. that design element. But oftentimes it seems like they move on like on a seven plus. There's a couple things that are like that, where that which is the same as like the uh, what the Lord uh, Castellant has a seven up ability, yep. right? Yep. Um, so it's not like that's that's cherry design space, but the what I like about that is it's more sort of these things just are, and I like these things just are because it makes the game go faster. Sure. And it lets people not have to remember so many things and forget things and so on and so forth. Triggers like that are easily forgotten. Anyways, the point being is that, and remember, these guys are going up a strength and an attack anytime they charge or get charged, right? Or get charged, being very relevant. Um, these dudes are swinging around basically like neg three rend swords that if they do wound six up, it becomes two damage. But the rend is always on. Sure. Okay. Um, so you still have that trigger is not always, doesn't always matter given the way damage works in 40 K cause damage doesn't spill. Right. Um, like it's localized to, it doesn't, it doesn't spill over to their models. 
Yep. But the fact that these dudes are running around with neg three swords, like when the, now when I read Hellblade, I'm like, yeah, I believe that. Right. Like the point is that feels like the thing straight out of the gate. I don't need to build half my army around making the Hellblade feel like the Hellblade. These lunatics running around with neg three Ren swords uh, are scary. Like they're super scary. Uh, I like I I did I rolled some battle sisters in a game and I there was a unit of uh, of blood letters and I was like nope not get into that we're going the opposite direction get yep. away from those psychopaths yep. because you know they're just gonna they they shred right through you um so like changes like that basically the way that this army synergizes felt so much cleaner to me um in here and i feel like they internalized a lot of the design elements like i look at things like the blood crushers who are just infinitely better than their their aos counterparts yep um the fact that the the blood crusher himself has three attacks with his hellblade and then his little and then he gets to make three additional attacks with his uh with his actual mount with the juggernaut yep. so they set like this mo that model is hot garbage. And, you know, they're they've always been overshadowed by skull crushers, which always made me angry that the mortal guy running around on the back of a demon is more effective in combat than the demon from hell riding on the back of another demon has never made any sense to me. I do not understand why that is the case. But these things are so much stronger and the fact that like along the board stronger, more rend, more attacks. What the heck? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, it's just, it really is. And, and it's, it feels more corny. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say. Sure. Um, I can see that. Yeah. Like that's it's my, more curly. it's more punchy, yes. more doing everything that corn's supposed to be doing. Um, not generating magical wounds that you, <laughs> <laughs> correct. Right. That you punch a guy in the face and somebody like 10 feet away drops dead. Yes, it's gen like what this army does. Watch, like I've I've played two games with with corn now, and what I've seen it do with the corn demons do is run around and generate a crap ton of attacks that wound very easily and slice through armor and murder people. But in general, they're pretty glass cannony, right? They die pretty easy. Yep. 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 All of that feels correct to me. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that is exactly how they should work. They don't. Corn cares not from whence the blood flows. They make dead people and they die. Certainly. Um, so it really just feels like it's it very, very, very much captured the nature of that force. And so I like that. Um the uh, let me say this. We can bring back those those blood crushers rules anytime. We can bring back the herald rules anytime. Uh obviously plus on a string. Or any, any of the herald, rules. Any of the herald rules. Yeah. Like I'd love to see just like heralds buff the demons and give them all plus one to wound or something or whatever. I don't care. Like that might have bad consequences because of the way wound things crack off. But you know, some kind of just the heralds grant a bonus to the demons of their kind near them feels very appropriate. I would love to see those war scrolls update like that. I'd love to have a reason to take a freaking herald. Okay. Or or how about the like the tally chart on Epidemius? Yes, he has one. Like every time you kill an, a unit by a neural demon unit, you look up the result and it's cumulative. So you're you only saying have to, yes, implement you only, that idea? I think so. Because you only have to kill like what, seven units to get the best buff as opposed to X number of models? Yes, it is completely unit based, correct. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I might like the unit thing better. Uh, well, especially in a game that tends to have a lot of MSU and smaller units, which, you know, 40k tends to have a lot of smaller individualized units when you look at things like vehicles and stuff. Yep. Um, it's certainly, it's certainly an easier thing to achieve, um, that units get blown off the table, right? Yep. Um, I would also point out that it's probably easier to track than remembering wounds or models or whatever, you know, um, because you know, if either a unit is on the table or it's not. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't need to remember like starting size and crap like that. Uh, so, and how many are sitting over in a dead pile? You just go, that unit doesn't exist anymore. That's one. That seems nicer. It's faster. Agreed. 
All right. So then, you know, I don't, I, I actually didn't send you Zinch because I was like, I don't want to talk about Zinch. <laughs> I left Zinch out of this discussion. Sure. They become even more hard since they get a four plus and vulnerable. Like they become yeah. the super tanky. Um, I mean, st statistically, you're negating the same amount of damage as the Nurgle stuff with the four, five plus five plus as a four plus even. Um, but still, like that just tells me that suddenly Zinch is as tanky as uh, uh, as Nurgle. Only you get better spells and you get high mobility and range attacks. I mean, I'm not going to say you're wrong. They do have some pretty great range attacks. Like you're, you ain't, you ain't wrong. Um, you know, flamers do some okay stuff, but it's like overall, I just, I didn't want to talk about Zinch because I wanted to leave them to the side because of their position in AOS. Yeah. Because they were at the top of the pile. I feel like they're such a, uh, they're such a, a well functioning army right now. I'm not yep. sure that they're not, they feel like they've gotten the most up to date treatment. You know what I mean? What, what I see when I look at the demons overall in 40 K is the benefit of design experience in your rule set. Sure. Yep. I'd agree with that. Um, they, they have the benefit of, you know, working with AOS for a couple years and then they sat down, they saw it worked. They saw what didn't work. They saw what people like, didn't like they, they sort of internalized all that. And they, when they wrote some new rules, they managed to make the demons feel more like the individual demon armies. Um, and they did it with cleaner, more straightforward rules than they did in AOS because in AOS we, there's you and I both know when we've worked on projects for a long time, the stuff you design well into the project is generally cleaner and yep. more, uh, more sort of smartly exploring the design space than when you start. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's often more complex. It's more nuanced and, um, it's generally more balanced. Right. Because you've learned how to operate within the guardrails you've set up, right? Yep. Design. Yep. Okay. So when I like, and nowhere is that more evident to me than Slanesh, where Slanesh, as we mentioned, is a hot pile of garbage in it is uh, in in AOS. Uh, I wish it wasn't. I, that's why I'm working on some mortal Slanesh units intermittently right now and not my demons uh, because I'm secretly hoping for a whole new demon release. We'll see. Um, I'm holding my breath 2018. It's coming. I believe it. But, uh, but the, this army, I've, I've run my Slanesh demons in two games now and I have had more fun playing them than I have had with that Slanesh army in, Maybe ever, frankly, to be completely honest, because they feel fast and lithe and deadly. And like, there's not, yes, there are units that jump around and, and stuff like that. But like, the speed really matters in this game because you need the ability to close with shooting units. Yep. Um, having back my invulnerable saves make, gives the units actually some measure of toughness. You know, that's the thing we didn't touch on with Slanesh in AOS, but you just die. Like you just die, you know. We don't have that benefit like Nurgle does of the of the you know some extra save. The armor is just total crap across the board. You just die. Now here, just having that five up, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's something. Sure. Um, hey, and, I know all about it. I have a five up in vulnerable functionally in AOS, and it makes a really big deal. It does. It really does. Like Matt, who won Nashcon, was like, "Not again!" It's like you know, like. <laughs> Another round of like, uh, you know, protector, you know, star souls would come swinging in. It's like meh, blocked a bunch of them, right? Um, and it like that five up does matter. It just does. Yep. Uh, especially for those random couple of times, because one or two times during the game, you're gonna roll and roll out of the box, yep. right? And and if that aligns with some important attack where they needed to break you, and then nothing happens, it's like. Yep. This just turned on you. You know, it's just that, that it's like I said, it's that fact that there's always a chance. Yep. Um, so the, the, the Slanesh rule, in addition to gaining the always strikes first, which is the most amazing ability I have played with out of the demon armies I've played with and the armies I've played against. It feels so good. Like people charge you, you just go into AOS alternating turns with them 
And then in every other battle round, you're just like, well, I'll go. And you resolve all of your units. It's like as though you had the green dragon's, you know, spore breath that makes the enemy go last. But you get to that, you get like an army wide carpet bombing of that. It's yep. amazing. Um, so between that and the fact that the standard sort of piercing claw ability of Slanesh mm -hmm. is that when you roll a six to wound, your rend becomes neg four. Neg four? Four. Yeah. Rend, right, neg, four. I know. It's almost as good as Balakor. Like, yes, indeed. Who has the best rend? But, um, uh, Balakor the... only getting better. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> he improves. He learns over time by the time we get to the 41st millennium. Um, the, the get point... a better sword. That's what his mo his mantra moving into the 41st imp uh, universe, or millennia is. Yes, absolutely. Like, that neg four rend. So, like, here's a situation that happened yep. in the game I played last weekend. I had a person jump back in some troops to try to block me off an objective, and they forgot that I had Seekers sitting, like, 25 inches away. Okay? And so then, like, which is a distance, but... Yes, yeah, so that's, like, the entire distance between starting armies and AOS. Correct. But then I immediately ran the Seekers, because they can run and charge. So I ran the Seekers around, got, like, 19 inches, and then landed a 6-inch charge, which is not hard. And, you know, they shot at me and did nothing. Uh, yeah. They overwatched me. And then I charged in and swoop, snip, cut right through you. Because Neg4 Ren says goodbye armor. Uh, and just slice those space marines to, to, to less than nothing. And I was like, now this is how it's supposed to be. Like, yes, this is how it's supposed to feel playing Slanesh. Like when you dive in there and just snip, dead. Um... One did get away. I killed the four, and then the other guy lived, and he was like, nope, I'm out of here, and he hopped his little happy butt away. He died the next round, but that's okay. Um, the point being is that, like, that little ability, I suddenly felt like I was legitimately playing the god again, right? Again, it was about that alignment. Um, and that's one of the areas where I've, I've, I haven't felt that as much when I'm in AOS because I have these claws that are supposed to be so sharp and are supposed to just cut through people. And I'm like, okay, I have an across the board neg one rend. All right. Like, cool. Mm -hmm. And then I run up against, you know, storm casts that are running around in two up, three up all the time, rerollable. And I'm like, yep. bounce, 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 bounce. Because not only, did, as you mentioned, like the lack of mortal wound creation, but also just the lack of ability to nut crack anything. Everything I have is like one damage and neg one rend and that's it. I just, I can't deal any damage, you know, whereas here I could, cause I can cut through armor completely. Right. Yep. Um, so it, it being able to negate armor saves, even some of the time is such a huge deal. Uh, so like, yes, I would take that over the, you know, the Slanesh rule that like Damonets have in AOS is if you roll that six, they get an extra attack. More attacks that do nothing aren't helpful to me. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, it just... Like, I I actually got out my AOS... So, before 40k launch, because I knew I wanted to play them in, in 40k, I got out my Slanesh Demons for a game of AOS. Sure. Just to give it a shot again. I was like, yeah, I haven't played these for a while. I'm going to roll them out. And you're like, womp, womp, womp. It really is as terrible as you remember. I ran up against it. So my opponent that I, we played a four player game and the opponent on the other side of the table, I ended up tussling with the most was a staunch defender stormcast <laughs> army. Okay. And like I surrounded his Lord Celestin on Dracoth, who was sitting in like cover. Uh, of course he was. Of course he was. With like a bunch of Damonettes. And I was just, I just stopped attacking after a little while. Like I just retreated and ran away. Because I would throw like 80 attacks at him and nothing. I just wouldn't even get a wound through. Right? Because he's on like two up re-rolling ones. And every so often I would deal a wound. And then, you know, uh, Lantern or Relictor Boy sitting, you know, X inches away would just heal him. And I was like, nope. I'm just leaving. Like this isn't... This is not, this does not have a purpose. I'm not doing anything here. I am wasting tons of time rolling dice to literally zero effect. Now that's a worst case scenario, right? Admittedly, because that's one of the highest armor, Sounds hardest. Like they were playing tactics. Breakable things. Sure. 
Like it's a good play. Um, but like the point was, I was like, this is just not accomplishing anything. You know, I mean, I didn't feel like I could even. There was nothing I could do. Right, and that's the right response. Is you just have to ignore that. Right, and like go sometimes you don't have a choice, but like you need to have an answer for that. So clearly, you need like a pair or three soul grinders. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. According to Paul Conti, they are the next best thing since sliced bread. All the soul grinders. So I would, let me just say, anytime we wanted to rewrite a war scroll, when, when Slanesh relaunches, if we want to get rid of that extra attack thing and put in the neg, it doesn't have to be neg four rend, but if we, you know, put in like a neg three rend thing, because AOS tends to have lower rend. Yeah. Then, uh, then definitely not neg four. Hey, I'll take it. There, there are like what, two or three instances of neg four rend in AOS. Like it exists. It's not. Mm, show me. Uh, two of the Forge World monsters have a neg four rend, I believe. Do they really? Mm-hmm. I'll have no, to. I'll, that, that's I'll go just, find them. That's just bad rule writing. I'm like just so, it like the rune priest. Like you could do the rune priest stacking on top of um, like two to three rune priests with their neg one increased rend on top of like iron drakes or something like that. Um, and get there to neg four. But inherently, I can't think of anybody that's sitting on the neg four. Like there's some neg threes, but sure. Sure, sure. There's there's a there's a fair amount of neg three, but that's what I'm saying. Put give me that. I'm I'm in for that. I'm in for that. I'll I'll take it. Um. All right. So overall, when I look at them, and the reason I wanted to do this show wasn't really to to do a hard comparison, and I'm not making a greater statement about how good they are in the meta. You know, I mean, in a world of guns and stuff like that, how effective demons can be is up for question. You know, I don't. I don't know enough. I haven't played enough games to make like a, a meta based judgment or anything like that. Sure. My point was simply to compare them in a sense of like playing them in both army in both games as I have. Right. Where do I feel it actually like that? They captured the essence of sort of what I expected. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Like that. I am truly the verisimilitude. I'm playing that thing. To yep. me, that has immense value because and, and they talked about this, right? Like when they when they described the, the codices and stuff, they said you we should feel like you're playing that army, that it matches the narrative, that, that that's the thing. Because that's why I collect that thing. I read the story, I thought it looked cool, I want that thing. All right. So yeah. Anyway, that's my feeling on that. Yep. Uh any any of those strike you or that you'd want to see brought in? Or do you, do you disagree with any of my choices? No. No. I think they all make sense. Okay. Right on. Well, there you go. I think that's our that's our comparison. And probably the most we're going to touch on 40k for the for the foreseeable future for the most part other than occasional news items. But I, don't I know. thought it would be I have some golden warriors, some golden boys. You do girls. have some golden boys coming, yes. But, you know, I like I'm sure we'll touch on it occasionally. Maybe we'll do a whole show at some point or a show or two dedicated to it out of the gate. But I thought this would be a fun way to look at it as somebody who's been playing the same demon armies in two different game systems sure. as to the differences between them. Um, and what can we learn and what did GW clearly learn? Because to me, they play faster, more synergistically and more like they're supposed to feel. And that to me says they had the benefit of two years of design. Experience. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yep. All right. So there you go. Anything else you want to talk about, Tom, before we call it a night? No. All right. Rock and roll. Oh, there you go. That's that, that's it. Very good. Demons. I hope. 40K. Exactly. Demons. Let's see a little. I want to see the update. We, let's, we got Corn is doing all right. Now we need to bring Nurgle. Let's, uh, let's hope for our demon that Nurgle gets some love here. That they get, if Nurgle gets splash love, from the 40k Nurgle releases, right? Then you're going to be in a good place, Tom. That's what I'm saying. Like, hopefully Maybe. we get that new battle Maybe. tone. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Like, because part of it is like, for me, they like they need on the main Nurgle stuff. They need some serious point adjustments. Like, and not not in a big that like they don't need to swing largely. You're saying like, each one, most of the units need some minor adjustments. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Because there's just you're you can't. And there's no rend. Like that's another big, obviously, problem. Right, right, right. Me. Yep. And um, yeah. So here's. So what I don't know. So I'm not as hopeful. Let me say that I'm not as hopeful. Um, but we'll see. 
I see your combined battle tome coming in the next couple months. So here's to you getting your Demon of Nurgle combined battle tome in the next couple months. I'll get my Slanesh one in early 2018, and we'll be all good. We can go back to our, our demon worshiping ways. The power of STD will combine, Tom. That's all I'm saying, once we have that on the table. We'll look forward to that team tournament entry in 2018. And that's going to be our army name. Put it down now, STD. There you go. I like it. Done and done. Mark it. Steve Herner, you can just mark us down for Holy Havoc 2018 playing STD. There you go. All right. So to all of you out there watching, thank you very much. We certainly appreciate it, as always. Uh, thank you very much. And as always, we'll see you next Wednesday.